Okay. Greetings, guys. It's Fancy, and I am the publisher and editor in chief for Swagger Magazine. Hey, Shanti. Hi, Jerrica. Look, I'm trying to do some waves while I'm waiting on my guests to join in. This is um, our first CEO chatter live. Y'all, do my light look too bright? It kind of looks like it does. <laughs> I tried to adjust it, but I didn't want it to be like dark in here either. And I didn't want to turn my lamp on. So today, um, well, for those who aren't familiar, CEO Chatter is normally my written blogs on the Swagger.net website. So I've been publishing this blog for quite some time, like for some years actually, um, kind of off and on. And I decided that I wanted to uh, bring it into like make it into a real segment normally it's just my perspective like on business and kind of like where business and life intersect however now that I'm doing a lot of segments and this is the first one today um, I'm gonna be bringing on guests and they're gonna be like other girl bosses or other girl CEOs maybe some men too and you all can be able to see you know what other people think and their other experiences as a CEO and just like you know we'll be discussing of course it's gonna be about business but it's also about like life because we all know especially those of us who are entrepreneurs hi Kim we know how our lives can impact our business you know or impact us as business owners so who is that she is M Harris greetings so my guest today is Candice Weiss. Candice is a writer. Um, she's actually a contributor to XO Nicole, as well as she is an attorney and um, a influencer. So I'm waiting on her to come in. I was trying to remember. <laughs> I was like, wait, I actually had some stuff to show y'all. Look, I'm in um, my shirt is a crop top. I didn't kind of want to just be having it all in view. But, and then I got on. Okay, there she is. So I'm gonna go ahead on and try to, Candace, can you send the invite to see um, if it would, if it'll come through? Kim, I remember you, girl. <laughs> Look, I don't... Once, especially like if we've met and we've talked, I don't ever forget them. I see you all the time on Facebook. Great Hi, Facebook. how you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm good. Um, normally, and like, well, normally when we do our other podcasts, I prefer that the guests actually introduce themselves. I figure that you can tell, you know, everyone about you better than I can. So we can start there, if that's okay. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Candice Geis. I am an attorney by day and a activist and writer by passion. Um, I recently founded my own law firm, Candice Geis Law Co. And aside from that, I write as a contributing writer for Exxon Nicole, and I am in the process of releasing a 100-day devotional for ambitious women seeking more called Prayers of a Gold Getter. Super excited to be here today. Okay, and thank you. I'm excited to have you. Look, I would really, I, if you sound a little low to me, but I don't know if it's my phone, and I'm scared to move it. Do you know Let me if see I hit if it's the volume, me. if it'll make a difference? I don't think it will, because um, I, I turned my volume up on my end. Let me see. It might... Okay. I'm going to try it on mine, too. Can you hear it me better me. now? It was me. Look, I was almost on. <laughs> almost okay, good. Solid. I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. But do you mind actually just doing the intro again? Because I don't know if that's going to impact the recording just because I will be recording it. So can you just tell us one more time who you are? And also we have some new people coming in. So absolutely. Sure. So hi, everybody. My name is Candace Geis. I am an attorney by day, an activist and a writer by passion. Um, I handle contracts and negotiations on the legal side of things. And I recently launched my own law firm called Geis Law Co, which is all about protecting um, small business owners by making sure they have the right legal framework in place for their businesses. Um, aside from that, I'm a contributing writer for Exo Nicole, where I primarily write about lifestyle and beauty tips for everyday career women. Um, and I'm super excited about the launch of a new project I'm working on called Prayers of a Goal Getter. And it is a 100-day devotional that is dedicated to ambitious women who are seeking more. And that is coming out very, very soon. 
Oh, wow. I love that. We used to actually have a go-getter section um, when we first started the magazine. And, oh, cool. and so, you know, yeah, I would feature different go-getters then. So, like, but we spelled it G-O-G-E-T-T-A. So, it's like go-getter. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great mind. Okay. Like. <laughs> yeah. So, also, like, the way I was more so introduced to, um, to you is because of the viral letter that you wrote uh, to the CEO of your Fortune 500 company that you were working for. Yes. And it was, the letter was about diversity and inclusion. Inclusion. and then it seems like also I have your um the template as well oh, very really good. Good. Yeah. yeah so like tell us more about that like what inspired the letter and where your head was at when you decided to, to write it really right so um I will say you know I went directly into corporate America after graduating law school and I think there's a huge burden on African Americans especially African American women to feel like we have to meet a certain mold um to not be someone that people see as a threat because you don't want that to impact your ability to grow within the company. And so I feel like I spent the first five to six years of my career kind of ignoring or taking a back seat when it came down to matters of diversity and inclusion. Um, and that could be anything from backhanded comments that were made from people who were sitting next to me or just the, the lack of diversity within the company and not being willing to speak up about it because I was afraid of how it would impact um, my ability to grow within the company. And so the letter really came from a place of frustration. It was around the same time as the incidents impacting George Floyd. Um, and so I was feeling all of these emotions as a new mom to a, a son, a black son, um, having a black husband, and then also looking around at what it looked like within my workplace. And so I, you know, cried about it, got frustrated about it, and then I'm like, okay, what plan of action are you going to actually implement to make a difference? And so for me, it was the fact that I, I, I knew I wasn't going to be someone who was going to be on the front lines marking, marching for the Black Lives Matter movement. It was in the midst of COVID. Um, you know, as I stated before, I had a young baby. Um, but I think that part of us being able to impact change is being able to use our own individual gifts and talents to make a difference. And for me, it looked like writing and being persuasive in their writing because that's something that I'm good at. So I wrote a letter to my CEO and I hit send on it and I immediately was like, mom, I'm about to get fired. Like I just knew <laughs> that the, it was going to be a negative implication, but what came from it was actually him being like, thank you so much for reaching out. You're the only person who has felt comfortable out of this entire company to reach out to me directly. And that says a lot about who you are as an individual. And so from there, it kind of opened up the pathway for us to have ongoing conversations about diversity and inclusion, and not just at a high level, but more so a deep dive into what we can do within the company to implement those changes and to see them reflected among the people who work with them. And so those have actually been ongoing conversations that have continued and I don't regret it at all. Um, what happened after that was I felt so emboldened by like actually standing up for what was right that I wanted to empower other women to feel that same way. So I wrote an article for Exo Nicole in which I included that template and the feedback has been amazing. Hundreds and hundreds of women have downloaded the template and have reached out to say that they have implemented it within their jobs and are you know now sitting on diversity and inclusion committees or pushing for a more diverse a more diverse workplace in their um their their places of employment and i think that's what it's all about so now after that happened then because then i was trying to make certain i understood it correctly did you um are you still with the firm and then you and you also have your own firm or Yes, I just said I work five million jobs. I'm telling somebody that earlier. So I am still uh, with the company, um, but I was granted permission to start my own law firm. And so the law firm kind of came out of, um, you know, during the pandemic, I was noticing this phenomena where people were launching these small businesses. Some were doing it because they were, you know, um, you know, lack of employment. Other people were doing it because of the social unrest. And there was this huge push to start promoting or supporting African-American businesses, which, by the way, we should all be doing regardless of somebody pushing us to do that. Right. Right. Um, and so in trying to support these businesses, I noticed that there were gaps in these businesses as it related to them having like a legit business that was following the legal rules that it should be following, that has simple legal infrastructure that would protect their business from, um, you know, 
like legal ramifications in the future. And so I started going live, offering free information to small business owners just as a way to be helpful um, and created this book called Inking the Deal, this course rather, that kind of talks about, um, gives you a cheat sheet to how you should handle contract negotiations and things like that. And from doing that, people started reaching out being like, well, I mean, I know you got the book, but I'd rather just hire you as my attorney. And so there was like this influx of people asking for my legal advice and legal services. And so based on that demand, I went ahead and launched uh, Guys Law Co. as well. Gotcha. Okay. I'm so glad I asked the question because I have a lot of diversity questions and I'm just like, wait, is she really like, because I don't, is the such a thing as this a diversity and inclusion lawyer? Does that exist? You know, normally what you will see is not necessarily in that capacity. Diversity and inclusion comes into place where you have attorneys who will look at your um, employment information to make sure that you're following equal employment opportunity rules and regulations, um, making sure that you are following like the federal and legal standards as it relates to what it looks like for um, making sure that you have the correct, like that you're actually following um, the, oh my God, it just slipped my mind. Like the right procedures and, and, rules and uh I, I know what you mean though the, right the like the patients and everything right right and so you know part of it is um making sure that you have a certain amount of a number of african americans or that you're giving these rights to people that you're not discriminating and so attorneys do come in and help from that perspective from po- a policy and procedure perspective so a legal background is very helpful as it relates to that as well okay okay got you so now, actually, because I'm just going to kind of pivot a little, because either way, I know that you're knowledgeable, but I do um, still just want to ask this one question still kind of pertaining to the diversity and inclusion. For those, like, because I know many people probably have felt the same way, you know, like they wanted to um, speak up or they felt like maybe that their job could have done something and they wanted to know what their, how, how the company felt about the matter and they never heard anything. What could possibly, you know, if you do go, try to go through with the template, Or even if you don't go with the template, but maybe just say something, you know, um, could there be possible ramifications for that, like legal ramifications to speak out? And if that were the case, then what, you know, what would they need to do? Yeah, so um, I would say be persistent. So I did have some people, this is not going to be a one time conversation. I think it's easy when things are a hot topic for them to, you know, you may have an attorney, I mean, you may have someone within your organization who shows initial interest, but as they start doing their day job and their regular job, it may fall off the map. So I will Mm -hmm. say, um, if you reach out and you feel like somebody started talking to you and then they stopped to follow up, I've continued to have conversations with the CEO of my company. Um, I try to reach out to him at least once a month to let him know what I'm doing um, in the community and what I'm doing within the company and areas that I think that Um, we could do better at and also I've developed a relationship with the executive vice president of human resources to have that conversation because that's a huge component within the wheelhouse of human resources so first I would say be persistent as it relates to that if you don't hear back at all um, or you feel like there are some type of ramifications negative ramifications that are happening against you you do have the option um to you know file a claim to say that you feel like you're being discriminated against if it's a situation where you feel like you got a demotion or your manager is treating you a certain type of way but i would Mm -hmm. encourage you to first follow the proper steps for your company policy as it relates to going through human resources and going through their full policy and procedures for how you should handle a situation where you feel like you are experiencing discrimination in the workplace prior to filing um, a suit because a lot of things can be handled internally and a lot quicker than it would be as it relates to actually proving this in a court of law. And so a lot of times, you know, human resources is really big on not getting into those type of situations and getting in trouble. And so they're really good about uh, being responsive to that. And if you have other questions for me about diversity and inclusion, I'm glad to continue <laughs> to speak about that. I'm actually uh, speaking with the Small Business um, Association um next week on diversity and inclusion i've been speaking at large um other fortune 500s about diversity and inclusion so it's in my wheelhouse and has kind of become a part of okay you know, you know so it's no problem at all <laughs> okay a part of your story okay because i did actually have one more 
Um, being that, you know, our target audience is more so small business, uh, black owned businesses. Right. And while we're having these conversations, I know that oftentimes we do try to hire within our own. So how do we, you know, it's kind of like, it's different. And yeah. even I noticed when you mentioned it earlier, you, um, mentioned like having so many minorities, um, you know, hired or employed. So is it only in the matter of minorities, you know? Do you understand my question? Like, could, could it possibly be... I just wouldn't want it to be in a situation like where it's, you only have black employees, you only want to hire black employees, but then again, we are considered a minority or we, or we have other minorities, but could there be some legal ramifications like if you don't hire within other communities? Right. Um, so, you know, I'm for diversity and inclusion all around, meaning that we are inclusive of all different types of people from race. Diversity and inclusion, first of all, one thing I like to tell people is that it's not just about Black folks. It mm -hmm. is about including people regardless of religion, race, uh, sexual affiliation, um, all of those things, right? And so when you're looking at it, um, you want to be inclusive as well. I, I try to go by the golden rule. So if someone is qualified to do a job, and they don't look like me, but they can get the job done, then I don't exclude them um, just simply based off of the color of their skin. So that's something that I would encourage all business owners to look at when they're making the decision to hire. Um, I do think that it's amazing that small businesses are getting themselves in a position where they can um, offer benefits to African-Americans or minorities who would otherwise be overlooked. And so mm -hmm. the only way I think that they will consider a... Um, that they would encounter an issue is if they are outright discriminating against people strictly based on looks, um, gotcha. based on, you know, rights or something like that. Like if you tell somebody, no, I'm not hire I don't hire white people. And then the person is just kind of like, well, okay. You know, but I, you I was just curious. Cause I know, you know, like a lot of us, we do hire uh, other black people, you know? Right. And I right. just would, I just kind of wonder like, has anybody ever run across an issue like that? Whereas, Hey, we are growing, but you know, we still haven't yet taken on any one of any other race. But I like the fact also that you pointed out that include with, um, with inclusion, it's not just about the color of your skin, but also we're looking at the, the sexuality and, or I guess you say the sex and everything yeah. else, you know, it's not just including one thing. Right. So absolutely. I do think that that's important. So now um, switching gears okay, <laughs> with sure. your other business venture. I mean, I'm sorry. What is the name of the, can you repeat the name of it? Like, is it more of a consulting firm? Guys Law Co. It's a uh, boutique business law firm and it is primarily mm -hmm. focused on helping, uh, you know, businesses of all sizes protect themselves from a contractual standpoint. So most of the work that I do is transactional. I don't do litigation and things like that. I handle things like the formation of how you get your business started. A lot of people feel like when they have a small business and they're not bringing in a lot of income, they don't need to go through the process of legalizing that business with the state. But you should for more than one reason. Number one, it limits your liability. So if something goes wrong, you are not held personally liable, whereas you would be if you don't have that in place. And number two, it gives you a certain tax benefits that people don't know about. So in an instance where you're not making a lot of money, that means you're taking a lot of loss, right? And you're able mm -hmm. to write those losses off. So educating people from that perspective, writing contracts and helping them to understand when those contracts should come into play. So anytime you're doing a collaboration with someone for money or the exchange of intellectual property or work or you are hiring someone independently to do work for you, you should have a contract in place to protect your interests that pretty much spells out what the expectations are, what money is going to be exchanged, if any, and so that there's no issues or concerns. Um, employment contracts and employment um, things in place as well for when you're hiring full-time staff so that you speak to um, what their responsibilities and roles are and the, the scope of work that they should be doing and things like that. Um, you know, everything, non-disclosure agreements, people don't understand the importance of having non-disclosure non -disclosure agreements in place when they are having conversations with someone about their business. So we have a lot of situations where I've run into people who said, oh, this person stole my idea. Or they told someone mm -hmm. else about my idea. And it's like, okay, did you have a non-disclosure in place? Did you have something in place that talked about intellectual property that says that it, it remains with you? They don't have the right to reuse anything. These are small things we're not thinking about when we are 
um, expanding or scaling our business. We're focused on how we can make money or how we can. Um, sorry, my baby just woke up. I was like, it's okay. I'm going to be quiet. I don't have child care today, so I'm winging it. It um, is totally okay. Look, I have three. They're way oh, old. Yay, I love running into other boss moms because I'm just like, Whoa! you know, but um, <laughs> yeah, just everything relative to how you should be thinking about your business and how you can mitigate risk how you can keep yourself from getting in a situation where you end up going to court. Um, right. The stats prove that 90% of, of people who have a small business will encounter some type of legal dispute throughout the life of their business. So what I do is try to mitigate the, the risk associated with those disputes coming up so that you have something that says, wait, this was in place. So technically I'm not liable, you know, so that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> gotcha. So you kind of like kept them to be proactive, you know, before a situation should arise. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you have to work with them? Because uh, I remember that you said you were going to speak with someone, but is it more so like, do you have something set up where is they could just, you know, like now, especially in this day of coaches, we kind of have the little templates basically already mm -hmm. in place or is it more so still kind of working with them one-on-one, -on -one, giving them that, you know, tailorized, um, services yeah and so right now what i'm really focusing on is providing um custom made services for businesses um i am going to work on developing templates uh for people who are not necessarily in a position where they feel like they're ready to retain a, an attorney full time but for me um it's been working on tailoring contracts for people because what I've seen is a lot of people are using systems like legal zoom and things like that to download contracts and those contracts don't necessarily completely cover the gamut of the issues that they may face because they're not tailored to their specific business and their specific needs right so if you're someone who's offering coaching services um what you need in your contract is absolutely and completely different than someone who is selling hair through an online routine mm -hmm. if you have an office front um, your contracts and what you need in place is completely different than someone who's working through e-commerce because with e-commerce one thing people don't realize is the importance of having a privacy policy in place um, something that talks about how you're using data when people touch your website what you're doing with that to be in line with the laws that are in place so that you don't get in trouble um, mm -hmm. and then terms of use they say how they can use your website how they can use information from your website how it's protected so it just varies. And so I think it's important that people at least have a consultation with a, a lawyer if they can afford to, to better understand what their particular business needs. But in the future, I do plan to roll out um, some ready-made things for people who are just gearing up and can't necessarily afford that extra cost because I understand that as well. Gotcha. And actually, I think um, you just, you spoke on some very important things that oftentimes, you know, we may not even look at. I think a lot of us have websites and I actually have the policies and so on, but at the same time, when you just brought it up, I think, because, you know, with some places, well, with some um, sites, you can kind of do the template with them directly there. Mm -hmm. And like you just said, though, but it might not be as uh, customized or as fitting as to what it is that I need to address. So you just, for one, made me think about that. But also, for two, a lot of the times, and I know, like, recently when, uh, I think there was, like, some type of amendment or something that happened you know and everybody had to yeah yeah the gdpr you're probably talking about the right GDPR. and so everybody had to add onto their sites and we were just kind of like clicking okay or yeah. you know put your name here and yeah. they may have not read all their fine prints so you just really kind of pointed that out i think to a lot of us here i think that was just i just thought that was a great point that you made and i just just wanted to touch on that but uh but also i don't know if your baby's getting restless so i don't want to hold you too much longer but i just want to kind of touch on uh work-life balance because as you just said and, and as we know you have a, a what is it a newborn or just still he's he's 11 months old now um oh. <laughs> i will say right now honestly i don't have work-life balance um and a lot of that well let me not say that because you know i have the flexibility to do things with him like when I'm rolling out, I will say this, I go on periods where I'm doing sprints. So right now it's a sprint for me because it's like I'm rolling out this devotional, the law firm, and trying to get that in place how I want it to look by 2021. So in those situations, I don't feel like I'm exercising the best work-life balance, especially given like there are certain seasons in my life where I kind of lack that. Um, 
and I'm saying that from a perspective of not only sprinting as it relates to my business, but like people don't realize that being a mom is like a job and a half. So in situations <laughs> <laughs> where you're lacking that additional support because COVID is here and you can't send your baby to daycare or things like that, um, finding balance is difficult. And so I think it has to do more so with prioritization. Like, what am I prioritizing for the day, right? So mm -hmm. um, last Saturday, it was like, okay, you've worked the last two Saturdays or three Saturdays. To, today, you are going to force yourself not to be on your laptop and to spend quality time just focused on your baby and making sure that he does something fun. So we went to the pumpkin patch and did that. And then uh -huh. other days, it's just working, you know, from the time I open my eyes, like, two o'clock in the morning so um i'm trying to practice what i preach because i talk a lot to other moms about the importance of work-life balance but mm -hmm. covid has been such a weird time that i feel like it's impacted my ability to stick with like my mantra on how i approach um work-life balance honestly but um what i'm looking to start doing is like being focused where my feet are and so when i'm at work for, for my you know, um, for the Fortune 100, I'm at work for the Fortune 100. When I'm at work for the law firm, I'm at work for the law firm. And when it's time for me to be a mom, like shutting my brain off to be like, okay, no, it's time for you to focus on your, your, you know, your husband or your son during that time period. So being present. Yes. I don't have an answer to that right now. You know, I could have <laughs> lied. I could have lied, but I just didn't feel like that would have helped me. I think we're all kind of going through it. Like, it seems like we slowed down for a minute mm -hmm. um, during the shutdown, and then we came back even harder, in my yes. opinion. That's what I've been saying. Like, it's like everything. I love how you compared it to a sprint. And also, um, I was just going to say, I asked that question, but to be honest, I kind of always say that I think um, it's harmony. Like, you know, I like that you said prioritization, but I remember like one of my older guests from years ago kind of said something like, you know, there really isn't such a thing, but it's, but to seek harmony instead. And so I kind of feel like it's kind of like a, 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 I'm almost like a balance between the two of prioritization as well as harmony when you're trying to just do all that we're doing. So Absolutely. I totally need it. <laughs> yes. Well, um, also, I know that someone was asking how to get in touch with you and just in case they come back, I don't know if they're still on or not, but how can, how can, how can they find you? Yeah. So, you um, I am on all things social at Candace guys. Um, and I can put it in the comments. I don't know how to pin anything, but hopefully I, I have your, uh, IG handle pin. Okay. So perfect. They can look there too. So I'm there. Um, I'm at guys law Co, which is at G U I C E log and then co on um social media um and then you know at candiceguys.com and then they can also email me at hello at candiceguys.com okay and is there anything um that you want to say or let us know before you before we wrap up I just want to tell you, thank you for having me as a guest. It really was a pleasure to be on here. You know, my morning has just been running from thing to thing, but this has like, <laughs> like refreshed my attitude. And I, I really enjoyed <laughs> the opportunity to talk to you today. Um, you know, you guys be on the lookout. Follow me if you can. I'm excited about the release of Prayers of a Goal Getter. I feel like as ambitious women, we're always emptying our cups all the time and one thing that I do for myself is writing down my prayers and looking at the manifestation of those prayers over time and so I pretty much compiled the heavy hitters um, that I had in place for like when I've been praying about my goals, my ambitions balance, all those things and I'm releasing them into one compilation and I think it's going to really bless somebody somewhere so you guys be on the lookout for that well, we will definitely be. And also, I think we're not too far apart. So I'll definitely be connecting from my personal page as well. Oh, where I are you? More are you in Louisiana? Uh, roll out. I'm sorry? Are you in Louisiana? Yep. Ah, okay. Yay. <laughs> Look, did you attend Southern? I did. I went, to, um, I went to ULM for undergrad. Then I went to Southern for my master's degree and my law degree. So people always get on me because I claim Southern the most, but I feel I was there the longest. Like I graduated from ULM in like three years. Southern really grew me up. It was like my first time being away from home for an extended period of time. And <laughs> girl, it just made me love being black so much. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I went to, um, look, I see my light just went out, but I went to Southern as well. So oh, when I, good. Saw that, I thought I saw that on one of your shirts or something. I was like, yes. did you go to Southern? 
So Absolutely. yeah. I am a jazz well, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay then. I'll definitely be in touch. And thank you so much, Candace, for coming on and speaking with us today. Thank you for having me. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. All right. So that was really informative. Um, I don't think we touch enough on the legal side of business. I know that it's not something that I can speak on myself or really uh, speak to, so I wouldn't dare try. So I'm glad that Candace came on. I'm trying to get my life back on. I'm glad that Candace came on to um, share the information with us, and I invite you all to definitely check her out. And as she said, um, you all can follow her at Grice Like Law Co., as well as um, her name is pinned in the original comment. So you all can also follow her personal account there. And she's also an influencer. So she, you know, has a lot of different and beautiful pictures on her page. So definitely check her out. And also, I just wanted to remind you all that we do have our The New Normal Issues in. And if you haven't already, you can purchase these from the website. They are $12. And then we also have our The New Normal Totes are now in. So I sent out a lot of orders between last night and early this morning. Like I was like, look, I want to make certain that I get these to the mail, like to the post office, because I don't want anybody to wait because our issue release party is this Friday online on Zoom. If you haven't um, already, you can get your tickets for that as well. So if you purchase a magazine, you get free entry to the party. If you purchase a ticket to the party, then you get a free magazine. So like, what do you really have to lose? Um, as well as I do have the totes like in a bundle so you can get the, the magazine and a tote. I think they're maybe 22 something and they might also include the shipping. I'm sorry. I cannot remember that off the top of my head with the busy week that I've been having, but I invite you all to check it out. Also, you can read the, um, the issue digitally on issue.com if you're a digital reader and uh, the tickets for the event are on Eventbrite and I'm trying to think if there's anything. I need to let you all know. Tomorrow, I'm going to be uh, interviewing East Baton Rouge Mayor Mayor Sharon Weston Broom, who was the who is the first Black female mayor of the East Baton Rouge Parish. So um, it's re-election time around here, and she and I are going to be discussing why she should be re-elected and just her plans for the future and what has you know um, transgressed since she's been in office these past few years now. So I invite you all to watch that. We're going to be on the Swagger Magazine Facebook page so you all can check it out. That's going to be tomorrow at 9 o'clock a.m. That's Wednesday the 21st. So thank you all for tuning in. And again, thank you all always for all the support. If you haven't, check out the website. That's swagger.net. And peace and blessings and have a great day.